Hello everybody, long time no see, the last few videos I've even put out, you haven't even seen me, but we're back with another first round mock draft, and I will have a few hitters for you guys coming up after this video as well, not the same day, but it should be in consecutive days, uh, recapping the senior bowl, playing a fun game, I guess, sort of deal thing going on there, and then also a massive, it's gonna take a lot of work, but a massive video coming out hopefully either by the end of this week, or it should uh, be over the weekend or something like that, so look forward for the future content as well but we're gonna do a first round mock here to kind of fill the uh the void on the channel recently and we've uh, kind of gotten away from mock drafts and we don't want to get too far away so let's go ahead hop right into this thing caleb williams at number one i feel like there is no explanation needed it's um a very popular pick at this time and it just makes sense financially with the player and uh new coaching or i guess not new coaching but you gotta you want to reset that you don't want to just stick with justin fields like maybe he gets better this year maybe the ceiling gets that much closer or whatever it is it's like okay well just start with caleb williams who has a lot more uh talent instantly in my opinion and then justin fields drake may now to the washington commanders now this is new coaching and and you're going to go with a very solid product. Again, another very popular pick. I'll try to recap. And by the way, probably shouldn't have used talent as the word for Justin Fields. I probably should have just said uh, they have already probably around the same floor, in my opinion. So, my bad. But yeah, Drake May, Washington, Commanders nothing new that's why i'm kind of breezing by these first few picks they aren't that entertaining another very popular pick in Jaden daniels for this third overall spot now again another very popular one draw mayo steps up at head coach changing the situation or changing the situation a little bit but you just can't go with max jones or bailey zappy i will be curious to see how heavy uh, they go after maybe like a gardner Minshew type in a free agency so we'll have to see what this team's doing heading into the draft here but i don't think Jaden daniels is completely completely out of uh the question if they get a Gardner Minshew right and they don't just go like Minshew level player just using him as an example and then draft like Marvin Harrison Jr now maybe that could be the case you know Gardner Minshew is a is a Pro Bowl quarterback after all so perhaps that happens there but I, I don't know but yeah Jane Daniels another just it's very likely at this point we're seeing it a lot and uh, I just think it'll happen so doing it here in the mock another one will breeze by real quick it's Marvin Harrison Jr here at the number four overall spot Ohio State receiver as good as it gets out of college football in my opinion and uh, we'll look to come into the NFL and already be one of the better in the league or, or I guess one of the better receivers in the league and um I words really can't tell you but I'm sure you guys have heard enough on Marvin Harrison Jr. That's another reason we're just breezing past. I mean, we've kind of gone past these first four picks pretty quickly here cuz I don't want to just keep blabbering on and bore you guys. Brock Bowers to the Chargers at number 5. Now, this one seems to be a little bit more likely with the Jim Harbaugh hire. I've had this happening for a while. I love Brock Bowers. Watched a lot more of his tape recently, did some rechecks and yeah, Brock Bowers is that guy. He's that dude and um the the NFL I hear is very high on him as well. So Brock Bowers here is, um, I guess, a great player, great fit, great everything. So give me Brock Bowers at five. Uh, we know how much Jim loves his tight ends. Jim Harbaugh, that is, new head coach for the Chargers. At six, we're doing Romo Dunze from the uh, the state of Washington, from the University of Washington there, Washington University, to the New York Giants. He's going across country there. And uh, yeah, Malik Neighbors is still on the board, and a lot of people still think that he is wide receiver too. Honestly, I'm, I'm going to be totally transparent here. Malik Neighbors, I saw two games of his, and I wasn't extremely high on him. I wasn't like, okay, this guy's like this guy's insane. I watched one game of Marvin Harrison Jr. I had that, and Romo Dunze wasn't overly impressive to me either. But Malik Neighbors didn't really jump off the tape for me and i still have a lot more to go with him i will obviously do rechecks i have more film on him now so malik neighbors will be a, an interesting evaluation as we're heading into the final revals or final reevaluations i guess yeah true so i was right the first time around as i normally am i second guess my words a lot i don't know why but we're getting off subject here roma dunze jump ball big athlete receiver type and uh with the three top quarterbacks off the board i don't think you like another one in this class as much you can go to quarterbacks you see bo Nix, Penix, mccarthy don't know if any of them are worthy of this pick maybe other than bo Nix, who's i i don't know he's he's my like my favorite quarterback in this class now he's not my number one ranked quarterback but i just don't 
don't think that the league's that high on him. I think that there might be some teams that are high on him, but I don't know how high, and I don't think it's six overall high. Joe Alt to the Titans at seven, another very popular pick. Uh, Alt has basically worked his way into that tackle one situation and uh, has definitely got himself his, uh, his top 10 draft pedigree. He's earned it over the years he's been starting at Notre Dame. He's been very solid, very good. I haven't watched him specifically like sat down notes taken everything like that but what i've seen from joel is great and um yeah i think number seven overall like i said another popular pick and i kind of breeze past it we're going with the big defensive end jared verse at number eight for the falcons now this is a guy who is just a hard worker someone that is just big wins with power has good bend and speed to his game as well jared verse is really um a standout to me compared to some of the other guys like yeah dallas turner higher ceiling probably but i don't really care jared verse is just the type of player i like and the one thing's the foul or the one thing that the falcons i don't think can really do right now whether you know let's say rebuilding right is is miss and i think jared versus floor is already higher i think he's a more of a sure thing than dallas turner is right now and yeah jared verse would just looks to come in i think he's got the nfl physicality the uh the work ethic the personables or the um the there's there's words for this maybe the traits i guess he's got the case all right he's built a case to be an nfl player stumbling on my words left and right as you, you guys couldn't tell i'm very tired number nine malik neighbors is gonna fall off the board here to the bears had a little bit of a fall but it's fine right he still got picked so he is still included but he is a top 10 pick in this mock draft scenario here malik neighbors going number nine overall actually got some dj more comps so it would be interesting i was thinking about going another area here or another um another you know avenue or different way here with maybe dallas turner or a corner if uh jalen johnson leaves so i don't know what we're gonna see as time moves on for the second pick here for the bears after you know whatever happens at number one obviously yeah malik neighbors the pick for me at nine don't regret it it's uh it's good and you're pairing a great playmaker with a um a great number one overall quarterback and Hopefully uh, they do something similar to this, to this in real life and really get a jump start to that offense there. I guess only look to to escalate the the defense further down the draft board. Ali Issey Fawaga at 10. Now how unlikely this is, I don't know. I mean, Daniel Jeremiah, I think, had this pick as well. But honestly, I couldn't remember. I think it, it sounds right. I think someone had Ali Issey Fawaga going at 10. And I've heard DJ rave about him. I'm pretty sure it was him. So Daniel Jeremiah, I believe, also had this same thing here. Now, again, I could be wrong on that. But Olu Fushanu is on a little bit of a fall and Talise Fawaga, we're going to have that recency bias due to the senior bowl where he was uh, stellar. And on the other side of him actually was um, on the other side of the ball was Leatu Latu, who was really good. Uh, Quinion Mitchell, just a lot of these standouts that, you know, hint you're going to see in this draft. So Talise Fawaga is the first one from the senior bowl that I can uh, see. Yeah, I think so. That's going uh, in this draft and it's top 10 overall. Talisa Fawaga moving in at 10 with the Jets there. He uh, kind of proved himself in pass pro through this year and I guess obviously in the senior bowl as well not only is he great there he is great moving up the field mauling down the uh the second level I guess help the run game on the right side he'll probably stick at right tackle I don't know if he's got the left tackle versatility or or uh type of athleticism if you will so uh, for a guy I highly anticipate him to stay at tackle I don't think he moves inside to guard but I think he sticks and uh plays right tackle at a at a pretty high level and uh the, that's what the Jets really need right now Here's the dallas turner pick at number 11 is that the okay i was gonna say that might be the first defensive player off the board compare uh uh this depending on who i had here with the falcons it was jared verse and yeah dallas turner is the next edge off the board just three picks after him so dallas turner out of alabama like i mentioned earlier might have a little bit of a higher ceiling than verse but i don't know he obviously i think he's built size as the year goes on i saw him listed at like 240 at some point this season and i can uh, almost guarantee you he's a bit uh bigger than that now so dallas turner a lot of um you know freak talk with him like he might test out of this world or or he has some of the traits that you just really fall in love with at the edge player so or at the yeah i guess off the edge so uh dallas turner at number 11 
for the Minnesota Vikings. Quinion Mitchell, the first corner off the board for me, and he is flying off at 12, which is kind of crazy. I know some of you guys are probably not liking to see this. You want to see Bo Nix or something, but I think it's like $85 million in dead cap if Russell Wilson gets cut. I don't know. Sean Payton spent all the time in the New Orleans Saints worrying about money every year because of the way that they were able to mess with the salary cap or the yeah salary cap and it was just it is what it is obviously money is money and you kind of have to deal with what's on your books and now that russell wilson you know you cut him or whatever like i i bet they want to move on but i don't know maybe they trade back up into the first round here later if a guy they like balls maybe I just don't know how you cut him and you're okay with just taking $85 million in dead cap and just saying, whatever, move on. Like, Quinion is a very good player. I think you ride it out with Russ for one more year. I think his void years in like 2026 when you can get out. You might just want to face those consequences. So this is if Russ is like the likely quarterback here for the Broncos. And if the rumors are headed this way, then, um, you know, I, I could see like Quinion Mitchell being a player for them with uh fabian moreau or yeah fabian moreau i believe is the other corner on the other side of pat sertan and then uh they have mcmillan or mcmillian who's developing in the slot quite nicely for them and could be a good uh good slot player for them in the future you just gotta you know pair them up with another lockdown outside corner and that secondary would be deathly deadly not deathly deadly olu pashanu stops sliding down the board he's getting taken here at number 13 to the las vegas raiders and they already have left tackle colton miller who's not bad at all either you move colton over to right tackle or you move olu to right tackle either or you just need to to whoever your quarterback is and maybe i do regret not going bonix here at hindsight but i just uh i don't know what the likelihood of it that they take a quarterback is like i don't know and this is kind of just shaking it up and i don't want to you know make olu fall all the way down maybe it'd been 14 would be the next likely spot so it is what it is i raiders fans let me know if you guys want a quarterback here and uh which one out of the ones remaining i would say bo Nix is probably your most likely candidate here so let me know what you guys are kind of thinking i have gotten like good and bad uh comments from raiders fans when I do take quarterback. So I'm, I'm kind of curious where you guys stand right now. Obviously, Antonio Pierce is more of the old style of uh, football, maybe not quite the air raid offense. So how does it or how much does it matter? Obviously, it matters tremendously. It's a quarterback for, for F's sake, right? But yeah, um, I guess moving on to 14, like I said, Raiders fans, let me know what you think about the Olu uh, pick here at 13. JC Latham, the Alabama tackle, will come out. And Ryan, Ram Ryan Ramchick, in my opinion, he's seeing a very like severe knee thing right now. He has like infection in his knee cart cartilage or something, multiple injuries, something crazy. He's obviously threatening his career. Maybe that's time for JC Latham to step in. Or, you know, you move Ramchick to, to left tackle. Who knows if he could do that? I don't know. Like, honestly, all things considered, the Saints team needs a lot more than just quarterback, tackle, and D-line, which is the team needs. In my opinion, this is a, like, very middle-of-the-row team that has just committed to Derek Carr for the next two years. Basically, they're restructuring his contract to push guarantees and his money down to the last two years so they can free up some now to maybe go make a move or something in free agency or just free up some money in general. Basically making a commitment to Derek Carr. Absolutely insane. Stupid. In my opinion, you're going to have to kind of just, um, I don't know, you're going to have to hope he's good, I guess. Here we are with uh, JC Latham at 14 to protect your franchise quarterback for the next two years in Derek Carr. Terry on Arnold, um, another NFL guy. Like we were talking about Kool Aid, McKinstry, Nate Wiggins, and maybe, you know, some people were talking about Cooper DeJean. But we're looking at Quinion Mitchell and Terry on Arnold here at 15 and 12. Is they just have like the NFL stuff, and the NFL apparently is uh, a lot higher. And now I'm not normally one to fall for the or just kind of alter my opinion based off that, but I really see the physicality, the ceiling, the upside with Terry on Arnold. I really liked what I saw from Quinion at the senior bowl. So the NFL is just getting, um, I guess it's just proving us, uh, you know, draft game of this. I, I don't. I don't know if I can put myself there yet, but I've been trying. This is my first offseason doing it. But I don't think um, 
I don't think they were far off. Quinion looked great, and Terry on Arnold. Uh, I see where what you're looking at. I see what you're seeing, and honestly, I really like the pick here. Maybe just around six foot might actually come in under that, but he's nice, long, comes down, makes physical plays against the run. I like Terry on Arnold. I'll, I'll just put it that way. Aggressive, good athlete, and uh, at 15, you're just improving your uh, your secondary if you're the Colts, where uh, you might have struggled. I can't. I don't know like the the defensive numbers off the top, but when you watch Indy. I think something that stood out was their secondary. Jackson Powers Johnson. Now I tried everything, everything other than this, right? Like this is the obvious pick here. It's JPJ always. It's going to be for the rest of the eternity until the draft happens here. So Jackson Powers Johnson's the the guy here. Maybe he slides over to left or right guard. Well, Olu Olu with Timmy comes in and plays center or vice versa. Olu Olu with Timmy, their uh, fourth, maybe fifth round. But I can't tell you. Uh, Michigan center that they picked last year in the draft probably comes in, plays one of the interior spots, and then Jackson Powers Johnson comes in and plays the other. This guy had a great senior bowl and uh, just was really, really good. So Jackson Powers Johnson really solidifies himself as a top guy in the interior probably the top guy on the interior offensive line jerzon newton for the jacksonville jaguars call this lame bad pick or whatever you i think i don't know if he profiles definitely not similar to devon hamilton but i was thinking more roy, roy robertson harris who they actually gave a pretty good extension to for almost no reason but he'll come into like i think it's a 3-4 defense probably play uh defensive end or or d tackle there obviously will play on the interior no matter what but it's just kind of where you want to line him up just on newton's a powerhouse and hopefully stacks on a weight and almost hits 300 I, i'd be good with like 298 295 somewhere somewhere in that area is fine but i'd like to see him exceed 300 and still move really well we'll see where he's at in the combine and whatnot but yeah just on newton here and it's not listed as a need for uh, PFF or Trevor Sikama. But Jerzon Newton, to me, like, if you just look at their interior, it just makes sense. You're going Jerzon Newton here. Obviously, under the assumption that you hold on to Josh Allen and that you have Trayvon Walker and he's really taking his steps forward, although he could kind of slide inside. I think he's he's big enough to do that. And then you can draft another edge player, maybe Leotu Latu here. You know, Darius Robinson's getting some crazy hype right now. I don't think he's quite this high of a, a caliber, caliber player but when all said and done i wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the better edge rushers in this class with uh with time and progression the right coaching everything like that any of these guys can really stand out but yeah Drazon newton to me interior defensive lines in need he's not better than byron murphy in my opinion yet i really loved what i saw from byron but I also really like what I see from Jerzon with his size, athleticism, quickness, and power. And you can say the same thing about Byron. But Jerzon Newton, I think, has just been doing it for longer, I guess, and just kind of uh, proving himself right in his draft stock like area. And um, I guess we'll have to see if Byron Murphy even goes here in this first round. Brian Thomas Jr., the receiver, another LSU guy coming out. Obviously, Jamar Chase there and uh, and joe burrow but i don't think he played with either of them now obviously i could be wrong i'm i sometimes am as all humans are but yeah brian thomas jr this is under the assumption they lose either tyler boyd or uh even t higgins over this next offseason and i don't think they'll lose t higgins i'm pretty sure that one's pretty uh, locked up you know franchise tag wise i don't think you can just afford to let t walk so this is under the assumption that either t or tyler boyd are gone and brian thomas would really just come in i've been struggling to, i mean the highest i think i've put him is jerzon newton's area right here at 17 but how many times i've like wanted to take him here at 14 i might have actually have done that once i couldn't tell you i really wanted to go here to denver at 12 so let me know denver fans do you guys like that brian thomas at 12 this is a very fun guy to watch i had a very good grade on brian thomas i really like the film i love the player i think that um you know playing on the other side of malik neighbors might have helped them a little bit but i really love that brian thomas jr is a guy honestly I, I really i really think that his name is going to pick up as more time goes on and brian thomas jr by the way going at number 18 and i would like to even push him way higher than this but i just really couldn't find a spot in the like i said i thought about it at 12 but i thought there was more uh pushing needs and uh and whatnot there for the denver broncos so slides down to the Bengals, who get in my opinion a very good pick and once again this is under the assumption they are uh you know wide receiving or they need receiving talent on the team 
team if uh, they departure with some talent over the offseason. Cooper to Jean's false stops here. Thought about Nate Wiggins, but I just thought about what like the Rams need, and it's pretty much just everything secondary wise. And Cooper to Jean can play everything secondary wise. It's pretty simple there. He's a great athlete. He's a natural athlete. Has some crazy high school, um, I guess, achievements, if you will. And was a track guy. He was really, really great at basketball. Has some insane highlights out there as well. So Cooper to Jean, by the way, the guy to watch out for as a riser because this guy is a, a cornerback one for a lot of people and i can honestly see it but yeah cooper DeGene to me well worth the pick at 19 and it helps this rams team tremendously give me cooper DeGene. nate wiggins just talked about him he call, uh, comes off the board here at 20 to the pittsburgh steelers they're kind of just scraping the bottom of the barrel but in my opinion this is not the bottom of the barrel at all kool-aid mckinstry even remains on the the board here but nate wiggins is very good another guy that's seen as cornerback one for a lot of people, just with his length, athleticism, ceiling, upside, traits, everything like that, Nate Wiggins, you know, is, you know, obviously has it. I just talked about him having it. So, yeah, Nate Wiggins, the pick at 20, you need a corner, you need secondary in general, you just need someone else to play on the boundary. Uh, Levi Wallace, I believe it is, sorry to him, but he's not the greatest player at, uh, at this age, or Pat Pete's even sliding back to play safety with their voids there and moving guys around. So, Nate Wiggins, you just need a, you just need a piece, all right, in my opinion. If you're the Steelers, and uh, Steelers fans may disagree, and if you do, I'm sure I'm going to hear it, but yeah, Nate Wiggins for me at 20 is the uh, the pick here. I just really like, I watch them. When you watch the Steelers, one thing just always stuck, stuck out to me. It's kind of like the 49ers where their DBs can just be a lot better. Leatu Latu going from LA to Miami. So another guy that's going to have to travel quite a bit there, but you're moving from you know one of the the more popular I guess the two of the more popular spots in america I, I don't know what that has to do with anything but yeah lehatu latu would come off still playing a uh, a lighter blue uniform again i don't know what it has to do with anything i'm just doing filler words here because lehatu latu everyone knows he's a technician probably the best pure pass rusher always has a game plan always he knows how to get to the uh the quarterback has probably the deepest arsenal of moves out of all the pass rushers here not probably he definitely does uh, display it at the senior bowl lehatu latu very good player and off the board at 21 to the Miami Dolphins. Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma, the right tackle that really showed up at the Senior Bowl, did a great job and uh, floats on his feet. was used a lot, right? So uh, obviously a very, very, very high ups upside guy if you've kept tabs on Tyler Guyton and what he does and doesn't you know, do so well. He's just not really polished, but he's got the sheer strength. He's got crazy athleticism. He's got the, the length of a lifetime. Honestly, this guy looks huge when you see him on the field. Tyler Guyton, a guy to watch for the Eagles I know you they have Lane Johnson in my lot of what is what do we always see the Eagles do they like to think ahead plan ahead especially in the trenches what Jason Kelsey I think collaborated uh, with the coaching staff or, or the executives there at the uh, at the Philadelphia Eagles franchise and got himself a, a Cam Jurgens who's playing really well and I why doesn't Lane Johnson say hey give me Tyler Guyton and uh you know you choose to coach these guys up and and these guys are, are giving them all the secrets from these talented uh veteran viewpoints and Guyton has the potential to be a really good player and yeah uh, that's just uh you know that i just i like the i like the pick here it might be popular by you know by the time this is out and popular maybe you've seen this an additional three times already but i think it just makes too much sense troy franklin off the board here now this is a guy that can truly stretch the field i know nico collins has done a good job down the field i don't take dell's a shifty fast quick player but i don't think they have the long speed of troy franklin when i say think i know i know they don't have the long speed of troy franklin this guy gets downfield lickety split such a fun guy to watch good speed he's a, a really good weapon underneath as well He's uh, very experienced in that department as well, playing at Oregon, where that offense like to work around the line of scrimmage a lot. And maybe you get a similar thing going here with uh, Bobby Slowick, who did he get a head coach? Am I like really blanking on this right now? Either way, I'm sure it'll be a dynamic play caller there. D'Amico Ryans has already done a great job flipping that team around. I think he'll make the right decision over again, but I'm almost 100% sure it's Bobby Slowick. I don't know. I don't think he got it. I don't know. Anyways, all right. 
moving on here troy franklin's the pick at 23 very good player and i think that uh it's just a need of theirs and i'm sure you guys actually you know might want someone else on the board texans fans are, are kind of hard to to please to be honest braylon trice one of my guys in this draft i'd say braylon trice bucky irving and bo Nix are my guys and i'm sure i can find you know someone else actually i don't actually think so you know i i don't think that there's another one of my like darling so those are probably my top three like baby favorite players in this draft not like i said like not like they're the best in this draft but those are my probably top three that i, I really love and um i really like so yeah braylon tries going one team ahead of my team the green bay packers who i'm a fan of and they go to the cowboys who we destroyed in the wild card was it the wild card could have been the division i don't, I don't remember you know it was definitely the wild card yeah um dallas getting braylon tries just another presence on the defensive line i'm sure either sam williams or dorance armstrong's contracts up or maybe even both at this point demarcus lawrence who knows how much longer he can really play michael parsons can kind of moves around but braylon tries just gives you the high motor he's had he led like what i think maybe even the country in pressures but he had a crazy amount of pressures he was so good and I think relentlessness, his strength, power, and just the, like I said, the constant pressure he puts on a quarterback's valuable. And I think Braylon Trice will figure out how to do it at the next level as well, especially getting coached up by a historically good defensive team in the Cowboys. Troy Faltanu here at number 25 to my favorite team. I went Graham Barton before at this spot and it just felt kind of right. Instead of that, we're going to go ahead and remove the weakest link because I think Troy Faltanu was already off the board at this spot last time i chose uh graham barton and daniel jeremiah i think ended up doing the same thing by the way me and daniel jeremiah we were like this one of my most recent mock drafts before this one me and dj had like so many similar picks i felt really good and i was in the ballpark with uh with most of my my drafts so i was so soaked on that so i'm going troy fatanu here at 25 and uh just kind of rolling with the punches you're gonna he's he's listed at tackle he's gonna play interior most likely at the next level he's so good in the run game and that's something we need to do as a, a packers fan I, I believe we run through aaron jones i think we needed him back to to even have that chance to win the playoff uh games that we were in i think that we needed aaron jones and the only thing that can get better than having aaron jones is the blocking for aaron jones and troy fatanu would help that a lot go and play a interior i think they are like rotating yosh nijman or yosh nijman however you say his name john runyon and then they have another guy on the inside that i'm not really a big fan of uh he plays center i believe i'm just blanking on his name right now either way faton is a presence and an upgrade on most or i guess three of our guys that we've been uh, shuffling with with the interior offensive line bo nix doesn't matter how far or how much i love him he's gonna fall all the way down to 26 and this is under the assumption baker mayfield is not the quarterback this is thinking he hits free agency and they are quarterback list i'm going bow next here at 26 rhymes it just feels right then you know if it rhymes it, it sticks so Bo nix at 26 to the buccaneers someone that has legs has accuracy and i think has shown when he's in like a rhythm deep passing is not a problem it's a question mark for him but i don't think it's a problem I think that sure some guys would like to see it more consistently, but to me, I, I really liked what I saw downfield from Bo Nix. So Nix, the quarterback here at 26. Again, it rhymes. It just works. Byron Murphy from Texas will be off the board here to the Cardinals. Someone that's really come on as of late in the NFL. Apparently likes, maybe he's not as big as you'd like as well, but Byron is so, so good at... I guess getting through. He always just finds a way through. He's big play after big play. When I watched uh, the Texas Washington game, really loved what I saw from Byron Murphy. I mean, apparently he's been doing that all year. So nice to see him finally getting the recognition he's probably deserved for some time now. Byron Murphy, I was never really ballsy enough to really rise him up. And I think I even did a three round mock where I don't even know if he went in that three rounds. I'm not going to lie. So I was kind of sleeping on him, and then I was thinking about doing some more drafts, and I was thinking like, oh, Byron Murphy might be a guy, obviously, to, to consider early second, but I was like, the consensus is so low on him. I don't know if I want to put him up that high. So definitely a learning spot for me as well. And Byron Murphy is the pick here at 27. Kool-Aid McKinstry, another guy that stops falling. He goes at 28 to the, the Bills and the, 
the Detroit Lions are going to kill you for it. If uh, Kool-Aid goes one spot before them, they just desperately need secondary and, in my opinion, a good boundary corner. But Kool-Aid McKinstry to the Bills at 28. It doesn't rhyme, but it still feels good. You have had inconsistent corner play. I don't think Kyer Elam played terribly in the, uh, I think it was the AFC Championship game when he ended coming in and play. Either way, Kyer, or not Kyer, Kool-Aid just feels better in this spot and more secure, very smart corner, plays with his head a lot. And Kool-Aid just, uh, in my opinion, an upgrade in almost every way possible. So give me Kool-Aid to kind of give Tredavious White a little bit on the other side, and that's another part of it, Tredavious White. Such an injury concern there as well. Give me Graham Barton here at 29. I, I was just talking about how much they needed secondary, but you can find it uh, down the board a little bit, in my opinion. And it's Reichstraw. It seems like a, like a lion, right? Like he seems like a good fit. Seems like he'd be the guy. I don't know how many people take in his injury history. He's actually currently in Injured. He was injured and playing injured throughout the season. He's had a torn ACL and he's had some other injuries in there. And his Rakestraw has severe injury. I don't know why it doesn't get talked about or why it's not so mainstream when talking about profile or... or Talking about Ennis Rakestraw, you never hear the injury concern come into play when I think there is a lot of injury concern. I don't get it, but it is what it is. I'm sticking to my personal beliefs, thinking he falls out of the first round. Spoiler, he actually doesn't even go in these last three picks. So take that with a grain of salt, because I don't know what I'm talking about. But I just, I don't get it. All right, I, I don't think he's the guy, but Graham Barton said he's up. There's been some interior def or interior offensive line questions for the Lions. I think Graham Barton solidifies either the center spot or left guard. He's just a, a good player and can work in multiple different spots, even kick out to tackle if uh, one of your tackles gets hurt. Uh, I know Jonah Barton or Jonah Jackson, I think plays left tackle for you. Well, Panay absolutely dominates on the right side. So we'll have to see what uh, they do here. If this is how the draft plays out and they're offered guys like Ennis Rakestraw, Kamari Lasseter, and in my opinion, TJ Tampa, who's well in play for a first round pick. Putting that theory to work here, we're going TJ Tampa at number 30, something I kind of just basically teased, but doesn't really matter. TJ Tampa, he's probably going to test really well, but he's got the length, size. He's got great weight on him for like the, we're seeing some of the guys come in. I think Quinion's a little bit lighter. Some of the cornerbacks, Terry on Arnold, Kool Aid, like they're a bit light, but TJ Tampa should weigh around 200. Honestly, in my expectations, I see him like weighing 195 at the minimum. So TJ Tampa, we'll have to see where uh, where he ends up going in the NFL draft. But I think he's he's a first round potential player or a potential first round player and pick. So TJ Tampa finding his way in at number 30 to the Baltimore Ravens who just need boundary help. Um, I think Brandon Stevens, who I don't know if he's like a converted safety or nickel or something like that, but. Yeah, he's playing on the other side. I think of Marlon Humphrey, and Marlon Humphrey's got some injuries. So we'll have to see what, uh, like I said, what they do here in real life or in real life in uh, in the the mock or in the NFL draft. I'm so tired at this point; it's not even fair. Give me a Marius Mims to the Kansas City Chiefs. I think it's a good fit there. I mean, Donovan Smith. I think yeah, Donovan Donovan Smith sounds right. I, I don't know. Like I said, too tired to to remember names. Plays left tackle for him there. Either Jawan Taylor kicks over to left tackle. Or you have a Marius Mims kick over to left where he's been playing right at the University of Georgia. You could do either or, in my opinion. I don't think it's like a big deal. I think a Marius Mims has the athleticism and the uh, the ability to play left tackle. Now, it might be a little bit of a learning curve, but it can happen. And Donovan Smith, once again, I don't, I don't think he's your guy. He has, I don't know, him and Jawan Taylor was a very bad tackle pairing. And especially looked terrible through the first bit of the year. I think Donovan Smith closed out the year worse than Jawan Taylor did. I think Jawan Taylor did a good job over the course of the season where Donovan Smith was just consistently a, uh, a hazard for this offense, if you will. So here's my final mock draft, which you guys can see. We chose Kamari Lasseter, last pick here for the 49ers, who they would just like a more calculated, smart, concerted, conservative guy. They've been penalized so much. They've had such inconsistent play with either Ambry Thomas or Isaiah Oliver or whoever it is that slides in over there. I know D'Amador Lenore plays a little bit of boundary and you'd like to see him kind of stick to the slot. Charvarius Ward on one side and then perhaps Kamari Lasseter on the other. And I think that that would kind of be best case scenario for them heading into next year. Or they pick a really good one up in free agency. They go poach another Kansas City corner in Legereus Sneed. Something needs to happen. But I think it's most likely going to be the draft because corners are getting quite expensive. And I think uh, Legereus Sneed's going to get a bag that the 49ers 
can't afford. So that is uh, the mock. If you guys have had your chance to obviously look over it here. And um, yeah, that'll be all for me. Thank you for watching. If you guys enjoyed, give me a like, go down and subscribe. Go watch any of the past content on the channel. And once again, that'll be all if you watched it this far into the video. I really think that you'll enjoy and it means a lot to me. And when I say enjoy, you'll like the, a lot of videos that I've already posted. And then it means a lot that you watched this far into the video. And see you guys next time. Deuces.